that tall bearings on their own before they start flopping over. I don't have any done that on this tea post at all. Okay, now I am. So in previous years, we've used for our tomato plants wooden stakes. They didn't work out too well. Last year we used mostly tea posts. Mm -mm, I no? used all wooden stakes. Uh, all wooden year. last year? Yep. Yeah, and it doesn't work out well. They, they end up rotting at the bottom. They or rot, the wind. they fall. Mm -hmm. Even if they were good when you put it in the ground, by the time your tomato gets big, the bottom's all rotted and then it falls over and then your yeah. tomato plant is laying on the ground. Yep. So this year we're taking inspiration from Kevin and Sarah over at Living Traditions Homestead. Yep. Um, they're one of the channels that are on our rotation. We watch them often. We follow them as a family and we find them as a good resource to learn lessons from things that they've experienced. They do a really good job at sharing yeah. what they learned about things and sharing it with other people. So they are an excellent resource. Yep, and last year I noticed that they used uh, tea <laughs> I'm trying to work and talk at the same <laughs> tea time. posts with um, cattle panels uh, about starting about 18 inches off the ground because tomatoes can support themselves very easily up till that point. Um, mm -hmm. And then that's when you really need to start providing them some support. So that's what we're going with this year and I think it's going to work great. Um, we're having to do some piecemealing because previous years we've cut cattle panels apart. Yeah. And uh, instead of going and buying a whole new one solid sheet, we're just connecting the dots. We have a lot of halves and yeah. only two holes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot harder to get a whole one home than it is to get halves. So, and you also bought the little plastic clip things, right? I to did. clip your tomatoes on. Yep. So we don't have to use that Velcro. The Velcro tape works well. It works great, yeah. But you wanted to try those little clips because that's what Kevin and yeah, Sarah use. Yeah, it's more use. easy. Well, I think it too, it's more easily usable every year. It's hard for me to keep track of all that Velcro tape to use over and over again, so. Yeah, true. I find little pieces of it here and there. Yeah, right. So if you're new here and you haven't been following my spring planting schedule, um, in between, I have a tomato row going in here, a tomato row right where you guys are standing, and in between is a full bed of carrots. So um, carrots supposedly love growing with tomatoes, and I'm excited to um, see how that goes. Yeah, they're gonna be friends. Yep. If you guys use that little Velcro tape that Rachel used on our tomatoes, and if you ever, man, the sun's bright, if you guys ever come out midsummer with one of those ultraviolet flashlights and try to look for those hornworm tomatoes, those flashlights work perfect for that. You can, those tomatoes or worms will like shine and glow. That little Velcro tape also glows. <laughs> and so it gets really confusing when you're trying to find worms and you see them everywhere and you have to figure out which one is the little Velcro tape and which one's the worm. Yeah. We'll have to do a video about that this year. We, uh, we've we been doing it for a couple years. We'll come out at night, shine around with that little flashlight and pick off those worms.
and keep smelling smoke. And like our whole back pasture is filled with it. But it smells like someone's burning garbage. Can you go higher? You guys cracked me up the other day with the comments about my uh, Osama bin Laden look that I had going on with my with my extra long beard and my extra long shaggy hair and my hat on backwards. We were laughing at you guys. I was like uh, probably two months past due for a beard trim and a haircut. It was once a long, long time ago. My sister and her husband at the time used to have, every year they had this big giant adult Halloween party and actually went dressed as Osama Bin Laden one year. It was very inappropriate. Probably the second most inappropriate Halloween costume I ever wore. I won't tell you what the first one is. But COVID was really bad in Michigan, like really, really high case numbers. So I tried to avoid the barber shop for a while. But things are starting to return to normal. Normal levels, whatever you want to call that. Good, baby? Yep. Nope. Oh, almost lost a clip. You didn't get hardware disease. So, thank you. You're first. welcome. I need to get the pliers still and bend a couple of these a little more. It's really shaded. <clears throat> We're gonna move you guys. Hold on a second. Look better? Yeah, other than I'm gonna be squinting now, but at <laughs> least hopefully you guys could tell. It was their uh, panels are set up about 40 inches apart. And like we said, they're raised 18 inches up off the ground. Tomorrow is tomato planting day, and Todd bought a new tool that is going to make my planting life dramatically different. Huge continuous improvement, so come back for that. If you're not subscribed, subscribe so you can follow along on how we absolutely jam-pack maximize this small garden space that we have to get the most out of it. And hopefully it gives you guys a ton of ideas on high intensity planting and different ways of growing and I'm excited to share them all with you this year. It's gonna be fun. Yep. And if you're wondering how we got away with this the way we did, we went and bought seven foot T-posts instead yep. of six. That way you can drive them in far enough, still leave them tall enough that your, your panels are gonna attach up nice and high. Right. So if you're gonna do this, invest in some longer non-standard T-posts. That's right. Okay, see you guys tomorrow back here in the garden. All right. Hopefully Amazon gets here early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to get out here and get after it? Yep. Should be good soil in here. Okay. No peaking.